Hey, how's it going everyone? This is your favorite psycho-psychologist speaking. Today we'll be discussing the manga Goodnight Poon Poon and his character Aiko Tanaka. Now, this might be a little controversial considering Aiko is depicted as very tragic, sad, and just overall someone we should empathize with. But today we'll be looking at why Aiko is, for lack of a better term, toxic. In the story, it is easy to see how bad Poon Poon and Aiko are together, but it is their separate personalities and problems that ruin their relationship. I already made a video on Poon Poon, so check that out in the description if you would be so kind. Reading the manga, I noticed that Aiko has one fatal flaw that dramatically affects the relationships. There's two sides to every story, so let me introduce you to the other side, the psychology of Aiko Tanaka. I believe that if Aiko was a real person, she would probably be diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. The video will follow on this diagnosis with examples as I break down Aiko's character. So what is BPD? It is a type of personality disorder that could be developed or genetic. There are 9 traits in the criteria and a person must match at least 5 of them to be diagnosed. BPD is more commonly found in females, about 75% of BPD diagnoses. First, let's talk about what causes BPD. Well, to be honest, it isn't super clear on what causes it in the genetic side. However, people who develop BPD will usually have an unstable and invalidating environment. For example, a child who doesn't get affirmation of love and instead gets feelings of betrayal can cause BPD. This is because a feeling of confusion arises in their mind. The child will ask themselves, why is this happening? Why does this not make sense? And is this normal? We can assume this to be the case for Aiko, as she was raised by her divorced father and a lunatic stepmother. This would bring up questions like, why did my real mom leave? Why is my stepmom hitting me? Why does she embarrass me in front of the other kids? Feelings of shame and embarrassment can be some of the most detrimental feelings for a child who never learns to manage them. Another highly suspected cause for BPD in children can be sexual assault. Now, there is no concrete evidence for Aiko being abused in this manner as a child, but in my previous video I do go over the clues where we are given to that possibility. Essay pushes the idea of guilt, shame, embarrassment, and confusion in a child, especially when done by a trusted associate. This breaks a bond and can harm future relationships with other people. All of this can also cause a child to consciously or unconsciously search for that love, trust, and affirmation that they are seeking. Kids like this will often latch very strongly to people willing to give them that form of attention. So let's look at Aiko as a child. What can we see that demonstrates a problem more clearly? In chapter 1, we see that after discovering Poon Poon following behind her, Aiko gets friendly very quickly. They walk to her house where there's a bunch of cult members chanting by the window. Aiko gets a look on her face of great embarrassment over this. Later, in chapter 2, Poon Poon runs away feeling embarrassed about reading his essay out loud. Aiko goes out and finds him hidden in the gym. They hold hands and Poon Poon tells Aiko he wants to protect her because he loves her. Aiko smiles widely and becomes very ecstatic, so much so that she kisses him and runs off. This is that attachment kids with BPD look for. Aiko feels abused and rejected in her own family, so Poon Poon giving her that love and care is exactly what she wants. However, this type of relationship can cause problems because someone with BPD can come off a little narcissistic in their pursuit of affirmation. Let me give you one more example. In chapter 7, Poon Poon faints and has to go to the nurse's office. Aiko scrapes her knees on purpose so that she could be alone with him in the office. She says things like, Everyone can die for all I care, as long as I have you, Poon Poon. After all, you adore me, right? Forever and ever. You'll only think about making me happy, right? And to finish it all off, to confirm her trust, she says things like, If you're lying, I'll make you pay. So with that out of the way, let's move on. I'm giving this topic a section of its own because of the book itself and because BPD is strongly tied to the relationships sufferers have with others. Unstable and intense relationships are a criteria of BPD after all. Let's look at our first glance of Aiko in a relationship. Aiko is 13 years old and dating a badminton player named Yaguchi. This relationship doesn't work out, but why? This is all made clear in chapters 41 and 42 during Aiko's conversation with Poon Poon. Even if you become boyfriend and girlfriend, no matter how much you'll love each other, you'll never be anything other than outsiders to each other. I don't want that. I want someone to give up everything and just see me. I think, even if I weren't here, Yaguchi would be happy by himself. Eventually, I'd be all alone again. 
In simple terms, Aiko didn't really like to feel like she wasn't the number one priority in Yaguchi's life. Yaguchi didn't make promises to run away to Kagoshima, he instead called it crazy and wanted to focus on his passion. This is not the affirmation Aiko is looking for. She is instead looking for someone to adore her and pay all their attention to her because she's missing that in her normal life. The next glaring criteria of BPD is efforts to avoid abandonment. Think back to the earlier parts of the manga where Aiko might have asked more than once in a conversation if Poon Poon liked her. This is a form of avoiding abandonment. It's verbal, but it's a way to make sure someone does like you and therefore does not plan on leaving you. One even better example is in chapter 120 where Poon Poon leaves Aiko's side and she says, Don't go off without telling me. And again in chapter 129 when Aiko wakes up with Poon Poon missing and finds him, she says, I told you not to leave me like that. This is the most obvious form of fear of abandonment that Aiko has. Poon Poon is never far, but the idea that he might have left her makes her depressed and panic. This is that unstable relationship found in BPD. So let's move on to the final subject. There are three parts of the BPD criteria that in my opinion, play heavily into someone's day-to-day -day personality. I know that sounds a little odd, but let me explain a little further. The first is chronic feelings of emptiness. This is such a potent aspect of someone with BPD that it affects their day-to-day -day thoughts, wants, and activities. If someone is constantly feeling empty, they constantly try to fill that void. When we analyze Aiko, we see that she does look like someone feeling emptiness. She says things that indicate emptiness, things like, Then I'd be all alone again. If my dreams come true, I'll be okay dying right then and there. The second criteria would be paranoid ideation. For example, someone with BPD might feel as though their friends are talking negatively when they are not around, or maybe that their friends are plotting against them in some way. One example of this in the manga is in chapter 137. Aiko accuses Poon Poon of wanting to kill her in the woods and pulls out a knife to defend herself against him. Now, my example could be contested given the situation in the manga, but in my opinion, in this specific scenario, Poon Poon was not doing anything to really imply he had sinister intentions. With everything leading up to this, it isn't far-fetched to believe she could be paranoid, but I am willing to understand how this could be just a product of the situation. Now, the final criteria is suicidal behavior, and, well, we know how that fits. Although you could argue there weren't enough scenarios of suicidal tendencies, it isn't normal for someone to go through suicide without ever giving it a thought. I can safely say that for majority of the manga, where Aiko is missing as a teenager, her suicidal tendencies or ideology were pretty high. Especially considering suicide rates are higher in teens, higher in Japan, and suicidal ideations are higher in girls. So what does all of this mean? This means that Aiko's BPD was most likely a developed personality disorder and not a genetic one. Aiko was never treated for her mental health and this means she was probably only going to get worse. BPD symptoms spike and peak in their 20s and then relax as the person gets older. So, was there ever a possibility of normality? Well, yes, just not with Poon Poon. See, together they create a communication pattern that is typical in relationships where the woman has BPD. It is described as male demands, female withdraws, and you can probably understand how this fits. One final showing of Aiko's BPD comes in the end. When Aiko finally commits suicide, and she leaves a note behind, it doesn't say, I hope you have a good life. I hope you do okay later on. Instead, it says, I hope that you would never forget me.